Hey makers, welcome back to Embedded Spare, your favorite stop for IoT and embedded projects. Today, we are diving deep into one of the most popular air quality sensors, the plant toward PM 2.5 sensor. Whether you are concerned about air pollution, building a smart home air quality monitor, or just want to learn about environmental sensing, this tutorial has you covered. By the end of this video, you understand exactly how this sensor works, how to wire it up, and how to display real-time air quality data on the LCD screen. And don't worry if you're a beginner, I'll explain everything step by step. Make sure to stick around because I'll also share some tips on troubleshooting common issues and ideas for expanding this project. Let's get started. First things first, what exactly is the PM2.5 sensor and why should we care? PM stands for particulate matter. These are tiny particles suspended in the air we breathe that are 2.5 micrometers or smaller in diameter. To give you perspective, that's about 30 times smaller than the width of a human hair. These particles come from sources like vehicle exhaust, industrial emissions, white fire smoke, dust and pollen, indoor cooking and smoking. Why it matters, the PM2.5 particles are particularly dangerous because they are small enough to penetrate deep into your lungs and even enter your bloodstream. Long term exposures has been linked to respiratory problems, heart diseases and other health issues. How this sensor works? This sensor uses a laser to emit air particles passing through a small chamber. A photodiode detects the scattered light and the sensor's internal processor calculates the particle concentration. Pretty cool, right? Components you will need. First, you will need a plant PM2.5 sensor, an Arduino board, an I2C LCD display, jumper wires, and USB cable to connect Arduino to your computer. You can get all the components at hop360.com.ng. Let's move on to understanding how we'll connect everything together. Let's talk about the wiring. Don't worry, this is simpler than it looks. The plant tower sensor typically has an 8-pin connector. Let me break down what each pin does. Pin 1, that's the VCC. Pin 1, that's the VCC. This is the 5 volt power, pin 2, the ground, which you connect to ground. Pin 3 is set, we won't use this. Pin 4, the RX, this receives data once it connects to Arduino. Pin 5, the TX, this transmits data once you connect to the Arduino. Pin 6, pin 6, the reset, we won't use this. Pin 7 and 8 are not connected. Important note for our project, we are using software serial, which means we'll connect the sensors TX and RX to digital pins 10 and 11 on the Arduino Uno, not the hardware serial pins. Let me show you this on the actual hardware. Here's my Arduino Uno. First, I'm connecting the sensors VCC wire to 3.3 volts. The ground wire to the ground of the Arduino Uno. The sensor's TX goes to pin 10. While the RX goes to pin 11. Now for the LCD. Connect the VCC to 5 volts. Connect the ground to the ground of the Arduino. Connect the SDA to A4 pin of the Arduino. And lastly, connect the SCO to A5 pin of the Arduino.
and we are done that's all the wiring needed let's break down the code line by line so you understand exactly what's happening don't just copy and paste understanding this will help you modify and expand the project later including libraries these three lines bring in the libraries we need think of libraries as creating code that handles complex tasks for us defining connection this creates a software-based serial connection on pins 10 and 11. The first number 10 is RX on Arduino side. The second, the second 11 is TX. Remember, the sensor's TX goes to Arduino's RX and vice versa. They are crossed over. This creates an object called a key that we will use to communicate with the sensor. Think of it as giving a name to the sensor you, you want to talk to. The OX27 is the I2C address we found earlier. 20 is the number of columns and 4 is the number of rows. If your address is different, change this. Now to the setup function. The setup function runs once when the Arduino owner starts off. We start communication with the sensor at 9600 baud and wait 3 seconds for the sensor to boot. The sensor needs this time to initialize its laser and fan. This is error checking. We try to communicate with the sensor, it doesn't respond. We print an error. And stop the program. The wild one creates an infinite loop. The code won't proceed past this point. If we get past the error check, we know the sensor is working. These lines initialize the LCD, turn on the backlight, clear any existing text, position the cursor at column 4 of row 0, and print our title M monitor. The 4,0 centers the text on a 20 character display. Now to the loop function. This creates a variable called data that will hold all the sensor readings. The sensor actually measures multiple particle sizes. Here we try to read from the sensor. If it fails, we print an error, wait half a second, and return exists the current loop iteration, starting over from the top. These lines send the PM 2.5 reading to the serial monitor. The data dot PM 25 underscore standard gives us the concentration in micrograms per cubic meter. That's the standard unit for air quality measurements. Here we do the same thing on the LCD at column 0 row 2 then print this text and value finally we wait 500 milliseconds that's half a second before the next reading this gives us two readings per second understanding the data the pm25 aki data structure actually contains much more than just pm2.5 it includes the PM 1.0 standard, the PM 2.5 standard, and the PM 10.0 standard, plus environmental readings and particle counts. For this basic project, we are only displaying P2.5 
PM 2.5 but you could easily modify the code to show you all of this then you upload your code and there it is on the LCD air monitor at the top and now we are seeing the PM 2.5 readings updating every half second understanding your readings let me give you context of these numbers the PM 2.5 concentrations are typically measured in micrograms per cube meter 0 to 12 for good air quality 12 to 35 for moderate 35 to 55 unhealthy for sensitive groups 55 to 150 it's unhealthy 150 to 250 very unhealthy why 250 plus is hazardous right now my reading is around 22 milligram that's pretty good let me create a smoke watch what happens when i light this incense the reading is climbing towards 3000 and there we go the sensor is working perfectly Let's talk about keeping your sensor running well long time. Keep it clean. Dust on the optical chamber reduces accuracy. Every few months, use compressed air to blow out the sensor intake. Don't take it apart unless necessary. 2. Proper placement. Mount the sensor where it gets normal air circulation. Don't place it right next to air vents, windows, or directly above heat sources. 3. Continuous and intermittent operation. The sensor has a fan and laser that wear out over time. Typical lifespan is for continuous operation 3 to 5. Fourth, calibration. These sensors are factory calibrated. However, accuracy can drift over 2 to 3 years. Compare your readings with official air quality monitors in your area occasionally. Before we wrap up, it's important to understand what this sensor can and can't do. What it measures accurately is the PM 1.0, PM 2.5, and PM 10 particle concentrations. Relative changes in air quality, effectiveness of air purifiers, indoor versus outdoors comparisons. What it doesn't measure, specific chemicals or gases like the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and the DOCs, humidity or temperature, Though some models have these sensors, allergens specifically, viruses or bacteria sizes. Reward applications. The, this level of accuracy is perfectly fine for monitoring your home air quality, testing air purifiers effectiveness, educational projects, citizen science initiatives. And there you have it. We have built a working air quality monitor. Let's recap what we learned. First, we learned what PM 2.5 is and why it matters for health, how the plant storage sensor works, complete wiring for Arduino and I2C LCD, understanding every line of code and troubleshooting common issues. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Arduino and environmental sensing projects. Drop a comment below with what you would like to see next. This is Optricity Embedded Sphere, helping you bring your ideas to life.